Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to show you some of the AI features that are found in Luminar 4. You could start out with an image that looks like this, move three sliders, and end up with an image that looks like this. Or you could start out with an image that looks like this, move a few sliders, and end up with an image that looks like this. I've been teaching people how to post-process their images for maybe the past seven or eight years. And over that time, I've seen a lot of different attitudes towards post-processing. And really, you could kind of divide those attitudes up into three different groups. First of all, we have a group that really enjoys post-processing. They think it's just a natural extension of their photography and it helps them be creative. They learn everything they can about an application. They probably use multiple applications and they're just really into it. Then you have another group of photographers that hate it, but they think it's a necessary evil. And they, like that first group, will learn everything about it. They will probably use multiple applications, but they don't necessarily enjoy doing it. Well, there's a third group of photographers. This is a group of photographers that really just don't understand it. And it's probably because they're not very good with computers and they don't really uh, understand the ins and outs of how a computer works, first of all. And then when it comes to post-processing, they don't get it. They don't really understand it. And it hurts their development as a photographer. This video is for that group of people because Luminar 4 has a number of different AI, artificial intelligence features now. And there's a lot of other applications that do as well. And you're going to see more and more applications come out with some AI functionality. So it is kind of the wave of the future and you could really take advantage of it in Luminar 4. So don't fret if you're one of those people that really don't understand computers very well and don't understand post-processing. You could still shoot raw so you give yourself the best opportunity to maximize your potential as a photographer. Then use the AI features found in Luminar 4 to process your images. And we're going to do a few different images here and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. For example, I have this raw file here, kind of a mundane shot. And maybe I don't really know where to start. Well, with Luminar 4, I could just go to AI Enhance and I could use the AI Enhance slider and move it to the right and you could see it improve the image already. I could go to the AI Sky Enhancer and move that to the right and you could see that once it renders, all kinds of detail came out in the sky that we didn't even notice at first. There's before and there's after. Then you could look at the image, well, if it's a little too bright or maybe it's too dark, or maybe it's not colorful enough, then you could use a couple very easy to use features that aren't AI. Like for instance, maybe I think this is a little too bright. I could just pull exposure down, right? Anyone could do that. It's very easy. And then maybe I want a little more color. I'll just go to the color tab and push saturation up a little bit. So I moved like four sliders. There's before and there's after. There's before there's after. Let's try a, a different type of image. Um, let's try this one. This is just a shot of the band in front of a waterfall, um, kind of underexposed, a little bit dark. Um, so we'll try this. We'll go to AI Enhance and we'll move that AI accent, accent filter, or a slider to the right. Now I moved it all the way to the right. You could vary it depending on your image and you could see how it already dramatically improved the image. There's before and there's after. Now there's no sky in this image. Now we could go to AI structure. AI structure knows the elements in a shot and it will add structure in varying amounts to the different elements, meaning it recognizes a face in the image and it won't add structure to the face, but it will add structure to the waterfall and the grass. It will add a little structure to their clothing, but not as much as the waterfall, or the grass. And watch, I'll show you. We'll move them out to the right. And you'll see how it's adding structure everywhere, pretty much, but their face. Isn't that cool? And we could boost it as well. And um, for this image, because there are faces in it, then we could go to the uh, portrait panel 
and we could go to the portrait enhancer. Now there isn't anything saying here AI, but the portrait enhancer does know where their faces are. So you could like brighten their faces up with the face light and you can see how it knows where their faces are. So that is an AI feature, even though it doesn't say AI portrait enhancer. So you could do anything here with that, but let's say we're done. There's before, there's after. I think I moved maybe three sliders. So very, very quick uh, type of work there. Um, let's, let's do a portrait. We, we touched on portraits already. Uh, so we're in the portrait tab and we'll just go to the AI skin enhancer first, which is this first one. It's a single slider. We'll move that you know, to the right to soften her skin. Uh, if she had blemishes, we could do that, click that, but she doesn't. Then we could go to the portrait enhancer and we could brighten up her face. We could whiten her eyes. See, it knows where her eyes are. We could enhance her irises. Uh, we could slim her face, doesn't need it. Enlarge her eyes, her eyes are huge already. We don't need to do that. Let's darken her eyebrows a little bit. So it knows where her eyebrows are, see that? Um, we could add a little saturation to her lips, a little redness to her lips, a little darkening. But, I mean, there's before and there's after. And then if you want to do other things, let's say you want to add a little bit of an Orton effect maybe to the image. So there's before, there's after. There's before, there's after. Look how quick that was. What a dramatic uh, change. Uh, let's uh, do another one with people in it. Uh, this kind of an engagement shot, very, very simple shot but it's a little dark because the sky in the background was so bright. So we'll go uh, to the Essentials tab. We'll go to AI Enhance. We'll take the AI Accent, move that to the right. You're going to see a dramatic change. We'll to the Sky Enhancer, and you can see it just kind of darkens the sky up in that corner. There's not really a lot of clouds up in here uh, for this image, but we could go to AI Structure, and we'll move that to the right. And you can see it's going to add structure everywhere but to the people because it knows where they are uh, in the image. And for this uh, image, maybe I just want to make it a little more colorful. So we'll add a little saturation. So I moved, what, three sliders. There's before, there's after, before, after. And just for fun, let's do one more. This image here, um, just kind of a typical, you know, shot, nothing special, but we'll go to AI Enhance, and we'll do that AI in, in the Accent. Move that to the right. The Sky Enhancer, let's move that, see what happens. Take sometimes on my computer that for the sky enhancer to kick in. Uh, it takes a little while for it to kick in, I should say. Uh, then we'll go to add a little structure like that. And there, I moved three sliders. There's before and there's after. So you could see how these artificial intelligence features that are found in Luminar 4, and I'm telling you, it's going to be in a lot of different applications going forward, will really help that group of photographers that really don't get post-processing. They don't understand it. They maybe will shoot JPEG because they don't want to post-process their images. Well, they'll be able to shoot raw and then post-process them at least somewhat. They could move, in my case, maybe I moved uh, AI accent too far. Maybe they'd want to move it less, you know, and, and stuff. So they could still add a little of their own personality and creativity to their raw files instead of just shooting JPEG all the time. So that's it. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>